Hello again, my name is Ray. Welcome back to the radio workshop. Uh, in part one and part two of my videos on uh, SUPET IF alignment, um, I chose figures for the oscillator frequency, um, the, you know, the signal frequency, the IF frequency, to make it simple. Um, so basically I had to have, if we're listening on, a, on three megs to a radio station, I said the oscillator would possibly be on two megs, the difference being one meg, which is the IF frequency. Um, in fact, uh, the oscillator, certainly on vintage radios such as this chassis I'm working on here at the moment, uh, the oscillator usually runs higher than the signal frequency, the station you're listening to. So if your radio um, station is on one meg, a medium wave, one megahertz, um, your oscillator would run on 1.470 megahertz, which is 470 kilohertz uh, higher in frequency, if you're with me still, <laughs> uh, than the station you're listening to. Um, I'm not going to go into all that again. Uh, that was in the last uh, video, parts one and, and part two. I did just say that um, if you remember, if you haven't seen them, I said let, let's imagine instead of one pointer on your radio dial, uh, you have two, move in unison. And that is our listening window, the bandwidth. Wide bandwidth, you've got to hear more than one station at once as you tune up and down the dial. Too narrow bandwidth, it's, it's going to be dreadful audio quality. This, um, this bandwidth, as I put it, our listening window, that is actually the, the radio's uh, selectivity. Its ability to select one station at a time. Say the medium wave band is crowded with stations, but sadly it isn't, not in the UK anyway. Um, selectivity is the receiver's, the radio's ability to pinpoint one radio station and just listen to that one and not the others either side. Okay, so that's, that's selectivity. Sensitivity is the radio's ability to hear weak stations. So you've got a very weak station. If, if you hear someone say, oh, yeah, the radio's deaf, what they mean is, let's turn that noise down, what they mean is that uh, for radio's deaf, it, uh, it, it won't hear weak stations, even when the decent aerial. Um, selectivity, that's the ability to pick out a, one station in the crowd of stations. That's mainly down to the IF stages, or IF stage. Uh, sensitivity is also down to the IF amplifier, but uh, the front end as well, the, the RF section. On the more expensive radios, vintage radios, sensitivity is improved by putting in another valve, an RF amplifier. So whereas in ordinary radios, such as this chassis I'm working on here, the aerial would come in uh, straight into the uh, frequency changer, the mixer oscillator valve, it would go to another valve first, the RF amplifier. Basically what that does is it amplifies the aerial uh, signal, uh, so it amplifies the radio station signal that's coming down the aerial before it does anything else in the radio, before it goes anywhere else. So you start off with a much stronger signal, um, which of course is important if you're listening on uh, the shortwave bands to very weak stations. So that's that. just wanted to clear up a couple of things. Um, just going back to adjusting the IF transformers to, to tuning them. Um, <coughs> obviously if you get a peak, you tune everything for maximum. As I've said, you're narrowing the bandwidth. Basically what you're doing is increasing the gain of the IF amplifier. Uh, and obviously the more gain, the, the more uh, you'll hear the radio stations um, rather like turning the volume up in a way um, but as I've said you decrease the bandwidth and what, what is often done that noise again what often happens is that uh, when these are aligned at the factory they are staggered so each tuned circuit is, is slightly off so instead of the point or the, or the very narrow uh, response curve it's more of a flat like that. Uh, that improves 
audio response. Um, just briefly, the radio stations in the UK are separated on medium wave by 9 kilohertz. So if there's our station there, 9 kilohertz that way, you've got another radio station, another one 9 kilohertz that way. Our sidebands, right, when this is transmitted, the sidebands don't obviously want to go and interfere with the radio station this way or this way. So the audio is kept narrow at the transmitter. Now the maximum allowed is 4.5 kcs. So there's our centre, this is what you're receiving. This is the carrier wave of the transmitter. And either side are sidebands, that's the, the modulation, the audio, the music. And that is not allowed, on the, well this is at the transmitter, to go more than 4.5 kcs each way. To keep that narrow, they reduce the frequency response of the audio going into the transmitter. That's, that's quite straightforward. That way, this transmitter won't interfere and splatter all over this transmitter. He's got his 4.5 kcs coming this way. This is this chap's 4.5 kcs. And here, they don't interfere with each other. So if, although each transmitter is... Um, the, the, the bandwidth will be 9 kcs, um, the actual audio is only four and a half because it's a mirror, the side bands are the same each side. Again, we're not going to go too far into that. Um, the, the idea of these videos isn't to get into terrible uh, technical detail about all this. It's to give everyone an idea of what happens in a super hit radio. Um, how to align the IF stages um, without totally wrecking, <laughs> wrecking the radio and um, to give you an idea of what is happening during that alignment process. Uh, so I, th I think that's about it. There's a lot more I could cover, but um, as I say, well, it, it's outside the scope of this video to go into a lot of technical detail. Um, so that's about it. If you, if you break one of the cores, if you're using a, a dust iron core and you're trying to adjust that and it breaks, um, it's a job, you've got to get the old one out to replace it. Um, I'll go into that another time, I think. Uh, basically, you drill it out, get a very thin drill, hand drill, drill that slug, the iron, the dust iron core out, break it all up very carefully with a screwdriver, um, and then screw another one into the former, if you've got another one. But uh, that's for another time. Hope you've enjoyed watching. This is the third video. Hope you perhaps learned a little bit more. Thanks for watching.